Hello folks. Someone in the comments yesterday or a day, someday, asked me to do a video about the five skandhas and I realized I had not done a video about the five skandhas so okay here I'm going to do a video about the five skandhas. The five skandhas is a very old Buddhist way of understanding what a human being is. And before the Buddha came around there was a prevailing understanding of what a human being was, which was the theory of the Atman. And the theory of the Atman has been revised and improved, I suppose you'd say, over the years. But in Buddha's time, the idea of the Atman was pretty much the same as the idea of the, the soul in certain forms of Christianity, which is that somewhere inside your body resides a little immaterial piece of God that is indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, haha. -ha. No, it's an indivisible thing that exists over time, passes from one body to another, and that's your real self. And the body is not your real self. The, what your real self is this thing that, that floats around inside the Atman. Now, as I said, the idea of the Atman has been revised considerably, and if you look at modern Advaita Vedanta teachers, for example, who talk about Atman, that's not what they mean by Atman. But I'm going to leave it, leave that, you know, where it is, because the Buddha was reacting to the older idea of Atman. So Buddha said, after doing all his research and meditation and lots of stuff that he did, that uh, this idea of Atman was not true. He, he didn't find any evidence for it. What he said instead was that a human being is made of five skandhas. And skanda just, it's usually translated as aggregate, but uh, it uh, really means heaps. Heap, heaps of something, heaps of things, you know, like piles of things. So they are traditionally form, feeling, perceptions, impulses, consciousness. Now, the tricky one is always number, let me see, four, uh, impulses. That's the way I learned it because I learned the Kobanchino translation of the Heart Sutra and in the Kobanchino translation of the Heart Sutra it says form, feeling, perceptions, impulses, consciousness. So I memorized it that way. Uh, sometimes it's volition, sometimes it's in action, sometimes it's just action. And speaking of Advaita Vedanta, of all things, just the other night I was looking at this book, Ramesh Balsakar, who was a student of Nisargadatta Maharaj. He just happens to give a definition of samskara, that one that I translated as... What did I translate it? Im impulses. He says, Samskara is generally interpreted as latent impressions of past actions and experiences. But here, in, in his uh, statement he's saying, but here the word is used essentially to mean something which existed before the arising of the dream. And he relate, he, he, he's one of these people that says, as Dogen said in Shoakumakasa, that waking life can be compared to a kind of dream of consciousness of, of the overall sort of um, uh, yeah you get into all kinds of sticky waters is sticky waters even a word a phrase anyway when you start talking about consciousness but let's not go there let's just continue on our thing about samskara but he, he's thing he's saying that the dream the dream is waking life right now uh, and shines as seen before the dream. The samskaras created in the waking state arise in the dream, but they are also created anew in the waking state. The truth is that they were created in what appeared to be the waking state, but actually was not. Notions arise in consciousness as naturally as movements arise in air. There is no need for samskara to create notions. And he goes, and it goes on from there. The point is, the, the whole idea of skandhas is usually confusing to people. Uh, Here's what they are in my uh, badly drawn kanji. Form, feeling, perceptions, impulses, consciousness. They are in Sanskrit, rupa, vedana, samjnana, samskara, which I just discuss discussed, and consciousness. And you can see the Chinese characters for those. And if you know Chinese characters, you'll, you'll notice some weird things. Like uh, form is represented by the character for color. And feeling is represented by the character for uh, to take something. Uh, and impulses is represented by the character to go. So there's a kind of lot of uh, confusion about what each of them means. I'm confused about what each of them means too. And it's kind of not the point to, to figure out what each of these mean. And you, you could probably find books and things and web pages and whatnot 
In fact, I just looked on Wikipedia, and there's a whole long thing there explaining what each of the skandhas means and represents. And blah, 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 blah. The main idea of the skandhas is that this is what constitutes a human being, and not that the human being is an essential single something that travels from life to life. It's just a set of five conditions that come together and create a new life and do this over and over and over again if you believe in that sort of thing. And one thing that I think is kind of interesting to notice is that if you kind of look at it in terms of the debate we have today and probably the kind of debate that that was present even in, in Buddha's time, uh, number one is form, which is the matter, the material universe, and number five is consciousness. So there's the debate over whether the real person is matter, you know, that matter just comes together and the reason we think that we're a person is because of the, the interaction of material elements in our bodies and, and so on and so forth. And then the, the other side of the debate is often, no, 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 it's actually consciousness. Consciousness is the real person, and, and matter is, is a, um, well, you'd probably get it in a guy like this would probably tell you that matter is just a kind of permutation of consciousness. So, so the underlying thing is consciousness, and consciousness gives rise to matter rather than matter giving rise to consciousness. I think those would be kind of the two debates, uh, two sides of the debate anyway. But you see here that form is one of them, number one, and consciousness is, is another one of them. And then between there's feelings, perceptions, and impulses. So it's kind of like framing the debate in a whole different way. So the point of this whole exercise of having five skandhas is just to counter the idea of the human soul being this indivisible something that carries on over time. And what the five skandhas actually are when you try to parse them and take them apart is kind of irrelevant. And I say this kind of, you know, not just flippantly, but because it, it, it shows up in Dogen all the time. I, I found a couple of quotes from Dogen about the, the five aggregates. And, and they're, they're always along the lines of, mind as the four elements and five aggregates is nothing other than the four elements and five aggregates. Uh, and... Uh, Here's a groovy one. Uh, I'm just kind of bring it up because it's so confusing. In a Dharma Hall discourse, uh, Dogen said, I remember that a monk asked Zhao Zhou, who's a famous Buddhist teacher, before there was this world, already there was this nature. When this world is destroyed, this nature will not be destroyed. What is the indestructible nature? Zhao Zhao said, the four elements and the five skandhas, uh, the five aggregates. The monk said, those can still be destroyed. What is the indestructible nature? Zhao Zhao said, the four great elements and the five skandhas. That's the koan. And then here's Dogen's comment on it, if you really want him to explain things to you. He says, uh, the teacher Dogen said, although Zhao Zhao said it like this, I, Daibutsu, myself, have a further saying about this. When the water is deep, the boat rides high. When there is much mud, the Buddha is large. The end. I'm not even going to try to explain that because I've been looking at it for the last 20 minutes going, ah, I'm not sure I get that. But the point is that whenever Dogen mentions the five aggregates, he never goes into any sort of explanation as to what they are. He just kind of throws them out there and he usually throws them out in the form of the four elements and five aggregates. And the four elements, I guess, are the material elements and the five aggregates are, you know, the five aggregates. So uh, he doesn't bother with what they are. And I don't think any of us need to really bother with, you know, trying to figure out what they are. It's just a, a formula for understanding what a human being is. So there's my explanation of the five aggregates or five skandhas, which, as it turned out, was sort of a non-explanation, so I'm sorry for that. But, uh, as we always say, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. That's all I got to say for today. If you want to contribute to me being able to say more things, please donate here at the link that I'm showing you below on the screen. And if you're watching on YouTube, the links will be direct links uh, in, the, in the, whatever, the description section. As always, if you're having a hard time financially or whatever, don't donate to me. It's great. It'll be fine. But those of you who donate are the ones who are keeping me being able to make a living and being able to, to still pay rent and make these videos and, and you know, eat uh, food. So I really, really thank you for that and uh, have a good time all the time. See you later. Bye.